there's a lot of unique features at Tally S and West um, that you really won't find in other, at any other right sites. I, I think maybe Tally S in Wisconsin has a few too, and they're really unique because you know, one, his stu a lot of his students were building that for him. I mean, Wright was not out there pouring concrete and making desert masonry walls. His students were. And so I think that gave him the opportunity to try things um, that, you know, ultimately didn't work. You know, he wanted it open, then it went to canvas for the covering, and now it went to glass. Um, but there is an interesting interior rain gutter inside the living room that not a lot of people know about. And he tried it, experimented. It definitely did not work. So he plugged it up and now it's not usable anymore. But those beams that come across the living room or the garden room are actually rain gutters. Uh, so that's a really cool feature there. Um, you know, I talked about it earlier, that desert masonry is just incredible. Um, there's a place called the Atrium, um, which hopefully you guys can get into, but he built it down into the ground a little bit. And so when you look out the windows, you're at desert level. And it's really hard to distinguish that, that sep where the desert starts and his architecture ends. Um, there is also a hammer up very high in a certain location in Talias and West. So I won't tell you where, but there's an apprentice hammer in desert masonry walls there at Talias and West. So go find that. You know, there are petroglyphs, which, you know, when I first went up there was really something that was really cool for me that he, even before there was laws about what to do with that kind of stuff, he was integrating that into his design. So there's big boulders all over Talias and West that, you know, aren't just integrated into the design, but some of them are actually up on pedestals so you can enjoy them and really see them at eye level, which I thought was very cool.